we have to continue on. We have to literally kick the ball uh, to the next uh, place. And that next place is the Jaguars have started to share their vision for a proposed stadium of the future with Duval County residents. Uh, it started this week during the first uh, few of 14 community meetings of what the team is calling huddles. Uh, on Monday, uh, team president Mark Lamping made a pitch for the stadium and took questions from attendees uh, with some concerned about what it might mean for the east side, which is the neighborhood just across an overpass where there's parking for tailgating and where the community does need some help. So, David, I would guess that you uh, have attended a few of these huddles and you've heard some comments. My gut feeling is lukewarm sometimes support for the stadium. Certainly not happy that we'd have to move the Jags someplace else. And oh, by the way, the Jags are at Daytona's International Speedway today to discuss that as a possible venue. Hey, we'll wave the checkered flag at that one when it happens. David. I think most of the huddles have been attended by people who are already in favor of doing the stadium deal. Uh, I don't know that there's been a lot of opposition the Jaguars have heard so far to it. Um, I haven't been to all the huddles, but from what I've heard uh, and went to the first one, and that was definitely the tenor of it. And as far as the out east neighborhood, I mean, the big issue has always been there's a sports complex where you have huge amounts of private and public money going in. Then you have this physical barrier, which is the road that goes to the Matthews Bridge. And the other side, you have one of the poorest neighborhoods in the city. Whether this stadium will somehow sort of overcome that physical barrier, I'm skeptical. Uh, I've been really heard a lot that's being done to incorporate out east into the, the overall development plan other than the Jaguars have contributed to some of those projects there but as far as a real big huge transformative project I haven't heard that yet it just seems east. logical you're already tailgating down a Philip Randolph it's literally within footsteps of the stadium if the Jags as I presume are going to start taking over some of their expanding properties some of their expand some of their parking lots why not put some kind of of historic A. Philip Randolph village with places to go and, and places to eat uh, that supports all the things that are happening on the other side of the Matthews Expressway. Have you heard any uh, talk about removing that bridge to open up? <laughs> Just kidding. I think that would be a killer bad no, move. But... No, nothing like that, Ann. And, and, you know, there's A. Philip Randolph Boulevard goes from the stadium complex all the way up into the out east neighborhood. So, yeah, that would be the thing, you know, you have a case where you go to the game and then you go to a Philip Randolph on the other side of the physical barrier for your dinner and your lunch and you know all that kind of stuff but I don't think that's happened yet and I'm not sure I've seen anything really in the plan so far that shows how that would change that's interesting because that I, I've been up through that area and it's it's really kind of Dan you're from New York it's kind of got that gritty industrial feel to it mm -hmm. i mean there's a lot of potential up in that neighborhood and a lot there's a lot of empty spots there unfortunately where they've started doing some tailgating uh parking but there's certainly some buildings some historic pretty mm -hmm. buildings that could be uh used in fact representative angie nixon i believe had an ice cream shop uh, in that area for a while uh, maybe it's still there so there's been attempts to develop um i, I believe the former owners of the jaguars have a um, nonprofit facility somewhere there as well. That said, the times I've been there have been for shootings, including a shooting where people were coming back from a game and got shot at as they were going to their cars. So I really believe that's the neighborhood next to this development that should and could be, as Andrew says, a great place. And as Jack says, a great place just to hang out after or before the game, uh, along with whatever is developed in lot J or whatever I mean, whatever it's interesting because it sounds more like their interest is is not so much in, you know, developing in that A. Philip Randolph area, but in creating an entirely new residential mixed-use development surrounding the stadium. And, you know, I think that that is something obviously will be vetted um, as we start to get into the true negotiations. And I think it's important that, you know, we're going to be bringing in the incoming mayor, so she's going to be bringing in this negotiation team, which I think is pretty key. Mm -hmm. um, but the question of the necessity of that development that they're talking about, you know, the memorandum of understanding says it's, you know, needed for this faculty and staff influx that's going to be coming to this University of Florida campus and that that, you know, necessitates this development. And then it also says, but absent that, like if that doesn't happen, this development's still needed. And it's not really explained why that would be the case. I mean, in my experience, people who are going to graduate school don't typically like move on campus you know it's usually people have their own place and 
they commute or, you know, to the extent that they even need to commute anymore. And a lot of these classes are remote from UF. There are, a lot of them are going to be remote. So I'm not sure what need they're feeding other than just sort of this original vision that we had for Lot J to build a entertainment and, and kind of mixed-use district. 